The future of the patients with V600E mutant non-small cell lung cancer looks a bit better in that they now have an additional treatment option uh, as we go forward. One of the things that's happened to our patients who have these oncogenic drivers for which we have effective therapies is that we see a rather dramatic difference uh, in their outcome. Uh, we looked at our patients, for instance, the first one that we, where we looked at the patients who have EGFR mutant non-small cell lung cancer. And we published a study from our own institution where we've had targeted agents that have been available now uh, with the mutation testing for about 12 years. And for the subset of 137 patients who we followed for more than five years, we have about 14% of them alive at five years. Now, that's still too small, but it's dramatically different than the two to 5% we see in the typical populations. Now that we've identified an effective therapy for the patients with V600E mutant non-small cell lung cancer, we can expect this population with this effective portion of the therapy to begin to see not only a difference in progression-free survival, but also hopefully begin to see this, their survival extend out beyond what would be expected. As I mentioned before, we have a substantial history of the outcome of the patients with V600E mutant non-small cell lung cancer have been treated with chemotherapy in the past, and we know that it's the typical approximately 12-month survival. So as we follow these patients and see their outcomes, we can compare their outcomes to what we've seen in the past, and will give us additional confidence that we're actually make a difference in the outcome of these patients with this subset. As we gradually expand the number of patients who can be effectively treated with different oncogenic drivers, we hope to see this continue to expand so an increasing proportion can have effective targeted therapies and begin to change the paradigm of the outcome of these patients. The next steps for research in the patients with V600E non-small cell lung cancer will include the development of more effective and more potent inhibitors of the BRAF mutant non-small cell lung cancer as well as MEK inhibition. We hope to see more effective drugs of targeting not only BRAF, but also its other RAF partners, where we may be able to see some more effective therapy, and also more tolerable MEK inhibitors. The other part where we'd like to see some increased efforts is targeting the non-V600Es. In most of these, it appears that the pathway is activated and we need to have an ongoing assessment of the efficacy both of the MEK inhibitors as well as other RAF inhibitors of these mutants. And there's techniques that are currently ongoing. There are publications uh, in August of taking a look at activation of the pathway based on the non-V600E mutations in BRAF and other lung cancers. And also there's ongoing preclinical studies assessing the efficacy of combined BRAF and MEK inhibition in the non-V600Es. If we're successful in being able to target this patient population, it would double the numbers of patients we could give targeted therapies to who had mutant BRAF, because the V600Es are only 50% of all the BRAF mutations that we see in non-small cell lung cancer. Well, lung cancer is a big disease, and so there are many targets, you know, there are 25 thousand uh, genes that code for proteins that, that could be potentially mutated in this disease. Uh, we're casting a wide net. I'd say, uh, you know, of course, there's immunotherapy and uh, agents that target checkpoints and, you know, novel checkpoints and then, of course, all the immune regulatory molecules. But as far as targeted therapy goes, in lung cancer right now, um, we're continuing to look for ways to target RAS. So I'd say RAS, KRAS is, is a big one. And that, you know, there are some specific drugs that will directly target RAS. Uh, there'll be uh, drugs that target RAS uh, for, for an isolation and, and binding to the, the cell uh, membrane. There are going to be drugs that, that, that are looking to target resistance. Don't forget with EGFR and ALK, as good as those agents are, no one is cured. What we need to do is we need to target resistance, and resistance uh, will emerge you know, to every agent that we use. So a lot of work to still do. The reality of our lung cancer population is that uh, only the minority of patients currently have identifiable driver mutations where we have the ability to take action. 
and use targeted approaches. Um, there's still a substantial chunk of patients in which we don't identify a driver mutation. That shouldn't discourage doctors from testing because even if you find those one or two percent that have something, you can make a major difference in their overall experience. Um, you, you know, we, we have a lot of unanswered questions. Are there other driver mutations yet to be described in this population? What's the role of immunotherapy in these uh, patients? What's the role of standard chemotherapy or those combinations in this uh, population of patients? Uh, what's the role of integrating immunotherapy into the BRAF population? This is mostly a smoking population as we've discussed and, you know, that's where immunotherapy seems to have greater uh, benefit. Uh, so I think there are, are many unanswered questions um, in this population, but I'm optimistic that we're going to continue to make gains uh, for the BRAF V600E patients.